nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. <laughs> oh, there we go. Now we're talking. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a smoking tire special. We're going to go on eBay Motors, buy some cars, buy some parts, and then meet up for a series of challenges. I don't know what Matt did to his car, but it's not going to compete with this. <laughs> Look what I have done. Peel up the toupee on the steering wheel. Dude. <laughs> Scandy flick. Oh! Yeah. He's lost the whole oh, oh, baby! <laughs> That's a lot of hits. That's a lot of hits. Hey everybody, welcome to Malibu. It is uh, too cold, wet, and gravelly in the Angeles forest to film today, which is kind of a shame, uh, but Malibu is probably where you're going to see the <laughs> yeah. vast majority of Gunther Works speedsters anyway. All 25 of them. Yes, limited to one of 25, as it were. We'll get back to that. Uh, but uh, the Gunther Works speedster is the roofless, uh, windowless, Topless. Topless. There's no emergency top. There's uh, no boxer spider thing you put nothing. up. Right. I do like that. I like commitment to open air. I like the FAR 550 Barquetta. Mm -hmm. I like the Lamborghini Mercy Roadster, which did have a top, but it was so annoying you could never use it. Yeah. You know, I like Boxster Spider, which has a mildly annoying top. I like commitment to open air. You know what I mean? Better right. than like a luxurious power top. Um, and so uh, this is basically the same set up as the coupe with some with some tweaks uh the coupe being uh the the, the formula is less uh what singer does singer sort of does a highlight reel best of all 911s right mm -hmm. they take their favorite bits from every generation and combine them into one car uh, what gunther works does is they go back to the 993 uh, which stopped production in 1997 as a 98 model year and then they develop that forward. What if Porsche had continued to develop the air-cooled 993 platform? So you end up with ridiculous carbon fiber, uh, a 435 horsepower, four liter engine by Roth Sport Racing, naturally aspirated, uh, 375 pounds of torque. They got the weight down to 2590 pounds which is ridiculous. So crazy. Carbon Especially because body. it looks big. Yeah. Because it's they widened it a lot. I mean, right. But it's carbon, so it's 2,600 pounds. And they've uh, the, you can see how wide the front fenders are. They really get those front wide 295 tires in the front, you know, to match with a 335 tire in the back. So nuts. So you really have this amazing turn-in. And then all the, the detail carbon fiber work. These carbon fiber seats, which are much more comfortable than They're they look. Amazing. They actually, they look cool but they don't look comfortable necessarily. They are comfortable. Yeah. This steering wheel, which is a fantastic piece of hardware, carbon fiber doors, carbon fiber dash, really, really cool stuff. Uh, the suspension setup, JRZ independent reservoir shocks. And to get from coupe to spider, or coupe to speedster, there's a few other changes. Uh, there's a more street oriented tune on the suspension, as we will discuss on the road. Uh, the seat mounting position is a little bit lower uh, because of, you know, For safety the wind. and wind. Obviously, the back seat area is gone. The back seat area and is it's gone. now strengthened and it's well, not buttressed. The, there's reinforcements in there to help with the uh, chassis rigidity. Exactly. The Speedster actually has a half inch longer wheelbase than the Coupe, which is now 90 inch wheelbase instead of 89 and a half. And they have a new Continental tire, which has a bit more compliance and a bit more flexibility for road use instead of a, a lap time focus like they were using in the other one. Plus they say they have a uniquely tuned exhaust. I don't know if I could tell the difference. I mean, uh, when did we drive the green one? Eight months ago? Yeah. Six months ago? A lot of cars in between. Right. They sound pretty much the same to me. I mean, I'm sure if you went literally back to back, you could probably tell, but... but Plus we have no roof here, so yeah. you hear a lot more of it anyway. Right. And speak. listen to this. There's, it fires up, but it doesn't give you a brappy announcement that it I'm started. Here. Right. It starts just like, oh, hello, how are you? But and if so, you poke it a bit, it goes, hi. Yeah. Sport mode. We yeah. have a, a sport mode, which opens the exhaust up. Uh, also has a, the shocks are adaptive tuned. So the sport mode does actually set the shocks to sport. But that mode, 
is even is more compliant than the coupe. So we're gonna do a little Malibu loop ski. We're both gonna drive and we're off. The shifter's got a really good weight to it. The steering's got a good weight to it. The pedals all have a good weight to it. But the clutch take up is nice and smooth. It's not chattery. If you get caught in traffic, it'll require a little bit of muscle, but it's smooth. It won't beat you up. See the water there? Yep. We're gonna come at that the other way. We're gonna do the loop this way. I'll take the very tight section. Clapman can take the very open section. <laughs> it's got a real bass tone to it, doesn't it? It does, and it immediately moves into that kind of uh, common like GT3 Porsche race car sound. It revs up super, super fast. When you go to blip the downshifts, you get a smaller blip than you think. Oh, my, yeah, much smaller. It was like barely breathing on my shoe to get it to jump 1,500 RPM. Like so quick that I actually came back and I asked Matt <laughs> if the tack was reading correctly because I was uh, over revving a huge amount. You really have to recalibrate your foot. Although they still have a 295 tire in the front, they've dialed back a little bit of the aggressive alignment on this car. And the net result is that it tram lines it darts around a little bit less than the coupe, making it a little bit easier to live with on the street. You have to fight it a bit less, which you want. Yeah. I would ask them if I had a coupe, I would have them tune it like that. I mean, on the, on the way up here, you drove, but just over LA's roads, it felt like it was damp really well. Yeah. I mean, you, and you could feel the tiny things through the wheel because there's a lot of solid bushings happening and the steering is so direct, but the, the car itself, is not jittering over those bumps. Yeah, I feel a lot of the little imperfections in the road, but then when you go to hit a big imperfection, you get into that independent reservoir and it really, really dials it out. Yeah. And it, more importantly, it never feels like you're gonna lose the contact patch. Like even right. over a, a negative G yump, or a real bizarre change in road camber. Yeah. I never feel like I'm gonna lose the contact patch, which I love. I mean, oh Jesus, rock. I don't really know how low the front end is, so I'm very, it's pretty low. But we know it's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Riding in this car really uh, reinforced me there's a difference between a track setup and a canyon setup. Yeah. Like we like to think of, a, even if a canyon is fairly smooth, it's never as smooth as a really good road course. They just, they can't level it as much. There's more ground settle. There's less money that goes into the road. And you need a suspension that was a little bit compliant to keep that contact patch and keep the car settled while the wheels do their thing. I love the back of this steering wheel has the little finger grips. It's a very thick rim steering wheel, but it's got the finger grips, and I don't want to unintentionally trigger anybody here, but it feels like a custom molded grip on a Beretta 92 handgun, where it's molded to your fingers. Right, right. And it allows you to just give it that extra bit of hand torque, you know? Even on this stupidly tight technical section, the car doesn't feel too big or too clunky. Which is amazing because from the front view, it looks incredibly wide. Yeah. I mean, and obviously the rear view is even wider because that's what Porsche does. Up over crest. Really a ton of front wow. grip. No understeer. On camber, I love this one. Pedal box is a little tight if you've got wide feet, but not terrible. So a normal 993, a sporty one, when you drive them, do you feel like most of the grip is at the back? Yeah. And you're kind of just 
suggesting the front do something? A little bit. Ooh. It does sound good. Oh, it's amazing. It does sound good. It's so oh. visceral and engaging and like, I'm just like, I can feel everything that's going on, but it's not beating me up, you know? Yeah, it, the, I mean, again, we've said it, the ride is so good, and the steering wheel, the seats, the ride, they're all like perfectly molded to the task. Yeah. Like they hold you well, so you don't have to think too much about staying in place, and it allows you to just drive. Like a good, a good car, a good ergonomic setup should do that. And this, you know, for 800 grand, you'd hope it does that. Yeah, this thing is really expensive, uh, 800,000 bucks. I don't even really know how to judge if it's worth it or not. I mean, it's one of those if you have to ask kind of deals, right? Yeah. We can, uh... <laughs> Jeez. Wow. There's a good spot for driver change coming up. Wow, this thing feels so nice. It's so analog. Like, there's, there's no traction control, no nothing, there's no electronics of any kind, really. And yet the limits are so high that you can carry the pace, you know, of a modern car. Yeah. So Here's you, a good driver change spot. Clapman needs to have a go. That, that reminds me, the turning radius on this car, just like the coupe, is the worst turning radius in the history of, of cars, period. These wide tires, the wide bodywork, worst turning radius Pretty ever. bad. Uh, Crown Vic, maybe a NASCAR, those are also really bad. Granted, highly specialized vehicle, not a huge deal. Yeah. If you know, if you're buying this, you have a, a round driveway and you make sure that the radius is correct. Right. Oh, Habibi. Wow, that is a frictionless engine. Friction wow. is the right word, right? Yeah. The steering it, is very light. It, it feels, feels a little like, bumps this way, but sorry, go ahead. It feels like the power is just like been unleashed, you yeah. know? Like it's not like the power comes from displacement, it comes from lubrication, you know? Yeah, it's so we're uh, gonna make a right here, so be careful of this uh, the transition. You know the term opening the taps yeah. is used a lot, but this is a, a oh, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up! No, don't get behind this guy. You want to be in front of him? They're turning right. Oh, they are. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Okay. But it's I like didn't want to get you stuck just, by you just add more faucet or more angle to your faucet, and more water comes out, and right. you don't. It's not like you hear the faucet straining. That's what this feels like. Yeah, oh, this it's thing so just good. goes. The ride is amazing. <laughs> oh, there wow. we go. Now we're talking. Wow. Ooh. Smell. Delightful. So that moment brings me to one of my only complaints about this is I feel like the pedal spacing, like the brake is a little too close to me. So even if I'm deep in the brake, it's a little hard to heel toe. Like the gas pedal needs to kind of come back and hit. Uh -huh. And then there's a little shelf of some kind above my foot when I want to pull my foot off the gas and go to the brake, it kind of bumps something. But that's like a very, very small complaint in an otherwise fairly amazing car. I feel like I have to move my feet a little differently when I drive it. Yeah. yeah. So I think, it, you know, for the price, that's the only reason I'm really mentioning it. Right. It is an imperfection in something that is priced for perfection. But, <laughs> The echo against the canyon wall is just incredible. Right? Yeah, that's a really quick rev. 
Yeah, I like what you're saying. Like, you get in this car and you're like, I'm going open top driving today. Yeah. And I don't have a choice about it. And you really embrace that. Like, I usually prefer coupes. I just like having the elements away and, and the sun protection and stuff. But there is something very special about driving a really good sports car where you can hear everything. Well, it's so, even though there is a frunk, right? It's so impractical. Oh, yeah. With no glass and no roof. It's not like you can leave it anywhere. Right. Yeah, good point. You have to leave your house, come back to your house. It's a point A to point A car, right? Driving it is the activity because you just can't do anything else with it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that echo though, yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's fucking bonsai. It's I mean, really it's nuts. really crazy. God, this is the ambassador for naturally aspirated engines. Yeah. It really is. Sounds amazing. The steering's great. The shock damping's great. I mean, the brakes are strong. I just, it's a little weird to, to heel toe with it. Well, you need it. You need a lot of brake pressure. Yeah. Um, right. The Porsche's, Porsche's power assisted brakes, um, which are reflected in this car, they, it's a high pedal effort. They don't have a lot of a lot of assist. Um, <laughs> special thing right very special thing super super crazy and honestly like I was kind of an anti Porsche person for a while but driving stuff like this and other cars that cost less money like you kind of get it and if you can get you can get a lot of bits of this from less expensive cars you can you know, just get a good engine with a responsive Ooh. chassis what good backfire this has a precision of powertrain that is very tough to come by, you know, for less money. Oh yeah. You know, it's it's got it. It may not have quite the as you pointed out. There's some little tiny bits of attention to detail. Granted, this is their prototype, right? So a little bit around the radio bezel. You pointed at one piece of leather on the interior that's not perfectly lined up that maybe wouldn't pass muster in a production singer. Right. But the experience you get from driving this, the craziness, you know, the like, oh my God, what is this thing? You know, it's it's on another level from most cars. Yeah, it is. And it is a very unique thing. Like they, they only made two 993 Speedsters. One right. was for one of the, I can't remember the board member's name, and then one was for Jerry Seinfeld. I mean, there's two yeah. ever. So it's not like you're gonna get your own. You're not gonna get your own. <laughs> yeah. And I think this looks better than the original 993 one. I know some people are gonna be very upset about that, but I think that one looked a little weird because they kind of just, it just doesn't, the proportions don't look as good. But yeah. this, with the way the seats, the shape of the seats, the match, the match, the buttress, like these kind of rounded edges are just so nice. This is really, really cool. a, if you've had everything else already, yeah. this is the end of the line. You know what I mean? This is the last Porsche. Right. It's either like this or like, a GT1 or you know what I mean like if you've tried every other 911 what's next you know this now yeah. a couple of things that are a little hokey it says air cooled engraved into the shifter knob that's a little hokey it says in the door sill limited to one of 25 not one of 25 not number seven of 25 not limited to 25 limited to one of 25. Yes, grammar teachers out there. That's, I don't think that's right. Yeah, it, and even like, even if the, like, I'm not a grammar stickler if it sounds right. When you say it though, it just doesn't sound right. It sounds weird. Yeah. And so like, just, and the, we're talking about creative choices. We're not talking about mechanical execution. We're not talking about the quality of the carbon fiber. We're talking about creative decisions that were made that were kind of like, huh? You know what I mean? So that's that's our, our my only real criticism. Um, you know, that and, and, and a couple of the buttons are clearly off the rack. Like the sport yeah. button and the nose lift button, those are off the rack buttons. They're nice, there's nothing wrong with them, 
but they're off the rack button. I don't mind the nose lift here because it's kind of hidden next to the, but this one has this like 3D printed piece of aluminum that's like, yeah. look at this. Yeah. And then it's just, a, it could, they could have just done something a little bit more interesting I agree. There. But um, overall, I mean, I, I don't know what, how to judge if it's quote worth it or not. It's very expensive, but it's incredible. It's pretty unique in the marketplace. You yeah. can't really get anything else like this. Singer is a different direction. When you look at a Singer, I saw a Singer the other day at Cars and Coffee. And I looked at it, I saw it, and I go, that's beautiful. Oh, wait, that's a Singer. You know what I mean? It wasn't, at fr very first glance, it wasn't obvious that it was a Singer and right. not a one-off deal. You know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. even an original 70s car. You know what I mean? It does take a second. It takes a second. it's subtle. And there's, they have more competition now. That's Whereas true. if you see a Gunther, it, there is no question what it is. It's a Gunther. It couldn't be anything else. It's not a home-built thing. It's not a real, an original 993. It's so obviously a Gunther. And so that, I think, makes this a little more unique in the marketplace. And I think the mission of what if we fast-forwarded air-cooled 25 years is a noble goal. Yeah, and you have, you have, in my opinion, like carbon technology from 2035. Right. But then you have an engine that's the air-cooled version of a GT3 engine. Yeah. And then, you know, the shape is the 993 shape. So it's, it's it pretty is, cool. It is very cool. So thanks to Gunther Works for letting us have a go for a couple of days. We've really, uh, really enjoyed this thing. It's bananas. <laughs> thanks to you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you later. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off The Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.